Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Shannon Ogden with the latest from Denver 7. They've been going back and forth for months, and now DIA and Great Hall Partners are going their separate ways. Problems with the $1.8 billion project started last fall when Great Hall Partners found weak concrete on the main floor. Well, in the months that followed, DIA accused Great Hall of unsafe working conditions and contact violations. The project is currently $300 million over budget and almost four years behind schedule. As Denver 7's chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski shows us, this could push the project back even further. They've just done a whole lot to disrupt this entire airport. Carolyn Wilkinson is a frequent flyer and candid with her opinions. Ha, it's just plain ugly. Ugly and confusing. And airport executives eliminated part of that confusion. I do not see this as a debacle. We did not make a mistake. You said it's not a mistake, it's not a debacle. Help us with the word. I'm guessing we're not here for a celebration. This is an unfortunate transition, but we're still going to give the citizens what we have promised them. For months, the airport contractor has asked for more time and more money. After this news briefing, it got its walking papers. Look, could we have done things differently? Sure. Could we have helped them uh, along decision maybe? maybe? Maybe we could, but I am not going to take the fall for the fact that they didn't give us the information that we needed upon which to make decisions and then tell us that we didn't make design decisions. A major decision leaving passengers now wondering when will DIA return to normal? I think we will beat the schedule that they put in front of us, which is 2025. What's the biggest question you have as you look around here? How much longer do we have to put up with this Mickey Mouse? Tony Kovaleski reporting. Now, we also spoke with Denver Mayor Michael Hancock, who says the problems are embarrassing, but he hopes construction can start moving forward. The Eastern Plains went through the ringer on Tuesday. Powerful storms out there. Look at this. Yuma County saw this terrifying tornado. Look at that. This is in the small town of Joe's out there in the Eastern Plains. Yikes. All right, from the First Alert Weather Center. Well, we're actually going to be in for some action tonight. Uh, stick around for that. Pay attention hour by hour. And as we go forward, you can see uh, a little bit of a reprieve on Thursday. Just hot. And then here comes some more activity in the afternoon on Thursday or Friday, rather, and Saturday as well. Well, a group upset over the Denver geese calling program wants to see the deputy director of Parks and Rec fired. He tells Denver 7, though, he's not worried. In a telephone call with him today, Scott Gilmore told us the roundup was the hardest decision of his career, but that ultimately it turned out to be the best option. Gilmore also tells us the city will be doing more to stop people from feeding the geese, and ultimately he says he hopes the culling will not be necessary again. Well, everybody seems to love the new Alamo Draft House in Westminster once they actually get inside. The theater's taken flack from people with disabilities over the handicapped spaces being too far away. Alamo says it's working with the city to add spaces on the street outside the entrance. And there have also been complaints of the doors being too heavy to open. Alamo says it's already added push buttons to fix that issue. Well, Denver leaders are pushing forward with a plan to combat climate change by raising taxes on businesses. Now, while today's vote did clear committee, it's unclear if this will actually make it to the ballot. Now, city councilors say it needs to be heavily vetted before a final vote. It might be time for Boulder to narrow its approach on cracking down on smoking. Tonight, the city will take a second vote on three different ideas. One of them is to raise a minimum age to 21 and ban flavored products. Another would dramatically hike taxes on all tobacco products. And then a third would keep the same concept but would exclude cigarettes. Now, the first one, the city could pass without issue, but it does need to choose between which of the last two it wants to put to voters. Well, beautiful, precisely cut, and unimaginably large and heavy. The sculptures are impressive, even if you don't know the story behind them, but there is a story behind them. Every inch of the labor is created by a man who really can't even fully appreciate what he has done. Here's Denver 7's son, Sean Toll. Started with landscaping the yard. Walking through Chris Brown's yard. I don't know if you noticed in the front of the house all the ovals. You might call the granite stone foreshadowing. That one's a thick one. It's not going to fit anywhere. To his backyard that truly catches the eye. The tall one is the bell tower. It's fun to tell somebody that, that you have a 
15,000 pound bell tower in your backyard. <laughs> the granite cutter started bringing his work home about a decade ago. These are reclaimed sink cutouts that otherwise we would have thrown away. Kind of like a glorified Lego set. I started to have fun. <laughs> he calls it his granite paradise. This is one of the older ones. And it was here for probably six years in its current condition up to here. And then just six months ago, I put this on. Each taking years to build. This actually looks pretty good right there. For just shy of 20 so far. A lot of this is just by eye. And you might say Brown has a keen one. I'm legally blind and basically what that means is I, I don't see good enough to drive and, and do a few other things. But this he really does well. Let me get a ladder. And yes, he does get help from his wife and friends. I love the, the sculptures. Even when he makes changes to paradise. He can change them all the time because they're not glued together. I look for the same sculptures, like where are they? Oh, I take them apart and I build a new one. <laughs> and it's like, what? I'm trying to make everything bigger and cooler, you know, a little bit more wow. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of granite might not fly with most wives. I love my backyard, even though it's getting smaller, but it's okay. <laughs> and neither she nor Brown see an end to the granite gallery. Lord willing, I'm still far from done. It would be cool what, what, what this will be in 10, 10 more years. In Fort Collins. There we go. That does it perfect. Sean Toll, Denver 7. Very impressive. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for watching. We'll have another one for you later. Hope you watch that one too. And download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.